joy of consecration. Can you say that with me? Now, last night, let's start in 1 Peter 1, 7 to 9. We try to differentiate between also between joy and happiness. Happiness depends on happenings. You get a good raise in the office, you are happy. Somebody sends you a recharge card, you are happy. You get a new car from your husband, you are happier. Hallelujah to Jesus. A free holiday trip to Dubai or London. Hallelujah. So that's happiness, but it's not joy. First Peter 1, 7 to 9 is a good place to start. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than of gold that perished, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto the praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Now watch verse 8. Verse eight. Whom having not seen, you haven't seen him, you are going through a crisis, you are going through a challenging situation. Please bear in mind that when this scripture was written, it was written to people going through trouble. They were going through extreme persecution. And if you don't read it together, you will think it was written to people who are sitting in the comfort of their room and they just got a pay rise and something happy happened to them. These guys were not having a happy time. Please note that. So watch this now. Whom having not seen, ye love, in whom though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Anybody who has been through persecution because of where I work and the things we do, I can relate to these guys. Some persecutions are very heavy. But here it's saying that you haven't seen Jesus but you are going through persecution on account of your faith, but you believe and you rejoice. So the joy of the Lord or the joy of consecration believes and rejoices before seeing the manifestation. Say with me, the joy of consecration believes and rejoices before seeing the manifestation. Can we say that one more time? The joy of consecration believes and rejoices before seeing the manifestation. You can write down Acts 27, 22 to 26. Paul was in the middle of a storm heading for a shipwreck. And he told the people to cheer up. Have you ever been, anybody ever been on a flight that was caught in thunderstorm? Anybody else? Hmm. The kind of prayer people pray that time. <laughs> Everybody will be calling on his God. One time I was flying home from Leeds through France. And before we were going to come down at Charles de Gaulle, my God. Even when you book and pray. <laughs> the thing was, I mean, the runway was filled with water and it was, it was, everybody was praying. I was giving thanks. Because the word of the Lord had gone ahead. We didn't land there, they took us somewhere anyway. Long story short. But Paul was in the middle of a storm approaching a shipwreck and he said, cheer up. So he believed something, even though he hadn't seen it. Another day I was in Lagos somewhere preaching and I had a vision about 2 a.m. that the plane I entered crashed. How many of you would like to have that kind of vision? <laughs> Very open vision. So it woke me up. It was like a night vision. I said, ah. I said, Lord, you know, I can always buy another ticket. How many of you won't talk to them? Don't be religious with God. Just talk plain. I said, Lord, you know, I, can, I, I just changed the flight. I don't need to take it. He said, just pray. So I prayed till morning, till I was to take the flight. 
I said, when I still go to the airport, I said, Lord, you know, let's have a discussion here. I, I can actually change this ticket. He said, I want you to be on that flight. But I had peace, so I got on the flight. It went very smooth, nothing. When we were about to land, I was just, I just, the thought just occurred to me, I said, that vision I had, self. <laughs> that vision. Mm. Anyway, it's already cancelled. That is why. Because my mind said, mm, maybe it was something that brought the vision. Maybe it was not even God. And I prayed for like three hours, and maybe it was not God, you know? As I had that thought, the thing, the guy made, he approached too fast, and he tried to slow down. You know that thing, you can't slow down like that. He approached too fast and he left the wrong way, entered the grass. The place that they do the come and see prayer. <laughs> People were pa 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 to pa pa. Everybody was even the two girls in front of me who were cursing before started calling on God. <laughs> the word of God had gone before. You need to leave. Prayer needs to be in front of you, not behind you. Anyway. When we came out, I was laughing, telling them that you these people. Sometimes God may put you in a place just to help people to come out. Anyway, in the middle of a storm, approaching a shipwreck where they lost everything, he said, cheer up. So this joy is not because something good has happened. You can rejoice in the midst of a very difficult situation. Our world needs that kind of joy today. The joy of consecration. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. Let's look at that one. Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail. This is not a good confession. And the field shall yield no meat. As some people say, I reject it in Jesus' name. It's in the Bible, I didn't write it. Too. The flock shall be cut off from the fold, and there shall be no herd in the stalls. What's this guy talking about? Yet, what's the next word? Can you say it like you really mean it? And I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord is my strength, and he will make my feet like hinds feet, and he will make me to walk upon mine high places to the chief singer on my string instruments. This man is saying, if nothing is working in my life, no fig, no fruit, <laughs> the olive has failed. It's like everything is not working, yet I will rejoice. Hallelujah to Jesus. Friends, this morning, there's a certain consecration you make to God that nothing moves you. Hallelujah. Some people say, well... If you come to Jesus, you will never have any problem. I beg to disagree. Jesus said in the world you have tribulation. Jesus said many are the afflictions, trouble of the righteous. Glory to God. And if you come into Christ with the mentality of there will be never be any trouble, the first sign of trouble you are ready to quit. It's like going to a marriage and say, once we enter this marriage, everything will be perfect. Well... The first sign of trouble, you are saying, did I miss God? Maybe, maybe it's the other guy I left that I'm supposed to be with. Your marriage is already in trouble because you are in two minds. Can I get a little amen in this house today? So, we, so the, it rejoices before seeing the manifestation. <laughs> you know, this Habakkuk 3, 17 to 19, was the scripture, the priest that joined us 33, with 34 years, April 29th, in Castrop, Denmark, she's still our friend today. This was the scripture she quoted on my wedding day. And I was saying, Father, what kind of scripture? This woman cannot quote blessed in the city. I, don't, I hope she's not watching. Blessed in the field, <laughs> you know. That was the way my mind was. But it has come to me a lot over the years that there are challenging times where it is only the joy of the Lord that will give you strength. Because the Bible says, it makes, it says, the Lord God is my strength. It's when you rejoice that the strength comes to overcome those challenging situations. Can somebody shout a big amen in the house today? Can somebody give the Lord a shout, irrespective of what you are going through right now? Hallelujah to Jesus. Say with me, the joy of consecration comes with total surrender 
and an attitude of thanksgiving. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, and Hebrews 10, 34 and 35. Hebrews 12, 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. There was joy before Jesus, so he endured something. You see, that joy comes with consecration. What Jesus went through for us was not easy. You, you know, you go through certain things, but nobody has gone through what Jesus went through. He died. He took the nature of sin. God rejected him. God turned his back on him. And he cried out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He went to hell for you, but he did it with an attitude of joy. There was joy in his front. He was not grumbling going through all those things. Hallelujah to Jesus. Hebrews 10, 34 and 35. For ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoiling of your goods, knowing in yourselves that ye have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away therefore your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. The writer of Hebrews that I believe is Paul was saying, you took joyfully the spoiling of your goods. It was not like somebody came to your shop and started packing things and you are clapping. No, that's not it. It's like you lost something and instead of regretting or the generator packed off and instead of everybody crying, we started praising God. That's when God moves in our behalf. Hello. I said we are putting a little bit of meat this morning. You took joyfully. If the devil cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your goods. Did you hear what I said? If the devil cannot steal your joy, he cannot keep your good. Because joy is the atmosphere of heaven. Joy, the joy of the Lord is celebrating the goodness of God, the mercy of God, the greatness of God above your trouble. The joy of the Lord is changing the frequency that you are operating on. When you begin to operate in the frequency of heaven, and you begin to create the, the, the atmosphere of heaven, that God indwells, he inhabits the praises of his people. And as you begin to do that, your praise begins to suffocate the enemy and the enemy says I cannot stand the incense coming out of this girl coming out of this house and because he cannot stand that incense that bondage is broken and that yoke is destroyed am I talking to living people in the house of the Lord today hallelujah to Jesus Paul in prison was writing to free people. He said, rejoice in the Lord always and again I say rejoice. And if you check it out, so many times in those few chapters, he mentioned joy or rejoice so many times. Maybe a dozen times or more in four chapters or so. So you can see how important it is that you rejoice no matter what hell is throwing at you. Joy of consecration comes with total surrender. You see... <laughs> Oh, let me try and bring this to where we live. Hallelujah. Let me read you a scripture that will help us. Go to Psalm uh, 16. Um, from verse 8 to 11. Because if you don't read scriptures in context, you're going to get a different idea. He said, I have set the Lord always before me because he's at my right hand. I shall not be moved. Amen. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth, my flesh also shall rest in hope. For thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thy holy one to see corruption. Thou wilt show me the path of life, and in thy presence is fullness of joy, and at thy right hand there are pleasures forevermore. Now if you go to Acts 2, 26 and 27, Peter quoted part of this scripture on the day of Pentecost. I know who was talking about? He was talking about Jesus going to hell. Yes. That he did not allow the soul of his Holy One to see corruption. There's an attitude you must have when you consecrate to the will of God. Listen to me. When you consecrate to the will of God, don't be a grumbling saint. I've said I'm going to do this in church. I've said, some of you have been sowing in tears this week. 
Some of you have given. You know, you can give with joy. You can give, you can give the sacrifice of strife. You are sacrificing, but... Hmm. You know, some parents do that with their children. Hmm. If you know I have suffered for you. Hmm. This my back carried you for nine months. This my hand did this for you. We had to sell the house to send it to university. We had to sell all my gold for, for you to go abroad. With everything that I have done for you. And see how you are... Is that how you'll be talking to your father? Who... It's a sacrifice of strife. You can't do that with God. Everything you gave him, he first gave it to you. That you are sitting here this morning is not because of your pretty face or my, or my I won't say handsome face. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> we had to borrow breath this morning when we woke up. Say, God, I'm waking up. Put a little oxygen there. Otherwise, they will take you to the morgue. They will say, pack it up. So if I gave him time this morning, he said, they that sow in tears. I'm talking about the joy of consecration. They that sow in tears. If you are married this morning, I want to tell you there will be times you are going to sow into that marriage in tears. You are going to say, I'm doing this because I believe it's the will of God. And I want to say to you, you are going to come back with joy. You are going to come back rejoicing one day because you denied your flesh. You honored the Lord. You honored your covenant. Heaven is going to honor you. Is there a witness in the house of the Lord? I'm talking about the joy of consecration. There's a consecration you made to God. Maybe it's good. Maybe things may not be looking up for you. But because you've made up your mind, some of you took time off work. Some of you have made some seed. You have sacrificed something. Some of you will still sacrifice for that generator. But I want to tell you, if you sow in tears, God will see to it that you reap in joy. Nobody can outgive God. You cannot give God your time, your talent, your resources. If you do it joyfully, God will see to it that good measure pressed down shaking together and running over you shall be overtaken with the provision you shall be overtaken with the mercy you will go from strength to strength as those that come to zion is there somebody who believes in this house today give them a shout hallelujah do you understand what i'm saying but there's a certain consecration you cannot make without joy if you have an attitude, okay, look at uh, Joseph that went to jail for what he did not do. If Joseph had a political ambition to be a prime minister, one of the worst things you can be accused of is rape. And the, your shirt is the evidence. Your own don't badge. That means you are finished. There's nothing you can say. I don't care how. They'll just say, but do you know, when the guy went to prison, he had an attitude of thanksgiving and joy. Otherwise, when he saw those people... Uh, you know, in Genesis there, he was saying to the guys, hey, what's wrong with you guys in Genesis 45 to 8 or so? He was saying, ah, why are you looking so sad? Who should be sad in that prison? You that they accused you. You should, so, some of all, if we go to something like that, <laughs> I didn't do anything, no. God, why me? Come on, don't get religious on me. Why me? I pray more than everybody. I fast more than everybody. I even give more. How do you know what other people are giving? <laughs> I even give more than everybody. Look at what I have volunteered. Look at what I have done in this house. Why me? Why is my own proposal not coming? Why is that guy refusing to show up? Why is every girl I talk to giving me a nail in my forehead? God, why me? But no, if you did it to the, for the Lord, you can be like Joseph in prison. And because of that joy, he was able to interpret other people's dreams. There's a joy of consecration. I believe Joseph made up his mind. If this vision is from God, nobody can take it away. I want to announce to somebody, everything born of God will overcome the world. Because you are born of God and the dream in your heart is born of heaven, it will overcome the troubles of this world. It will overcome the challenges of this time. Your marriage will survive. Your home will survive. Your children will survive. God will bring you to a wealthy place. Is there a witness in the house of the Lord today? The joy of consecration. <laughs> Paul writing to free people says to them, Rejoice in the Lord always. 
and again I say rejoice. But we know Paul preached. He preached it, he lived it. Because in that Philippian jail, he was rejoicing. He was saying praise God. He began to worship God. There are times you don't feel like worshiping God. That's when you should worship him. There are times you feel like crying. Start laughing. Because the thing you need is already credited in your account. How many of you know that sometimes somebody says we have paid, but network can delay the alert appearing? The fact that there's a delay in the network does not compromise the integrity of the sender. If Pastor Shola says to me now, I have sent X to you, and network refused to, I won't be crying because of network. Because I know the person that promised me. Am I talking to somebody in this house? Your account is credited with babies already. Uh -huh. I told you that story yesterday. That church I went. The baby shall be born. If you were here last night. The man, the saxophonist came and danced. The baby came out dead. But because he rejoiced at the word of the Lord, the baby shook. And God brought the baby back. There's a way you, you keep crystal. La, 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 la. May God give us understanding in the name of Jesus. Every scripture you read is your receipt of the payment of what Jesus did. If he says, by his stripes you are healed, that's the receipt. It's been paid for. Let me tell you quickly, there's a big difference. Everybody looked to the cross when Jesus comes. When Jesus comes. At the end of the month, when they pay me, I will pay you. So people's salary is already finished before the end of the month because they're taking the latest shoe, the latest Zankara, the latest everything before the end of the month. But the person giving me say, I know your comp I have more faith in your company that they are going to pay you. But our own has been credited. The, the person you are collecting from says, there is enough here to collect more than what you need. That should be enough ground to start rejoicing. Because Jesus credited your account. All the promises of God are yea and amen in Christ. Jesus! When I do that, that one testimony just hits me with that. <laughs> I was sharing. I was in one little place in uh, Nasarawa State. I was ministering. One of my pastors was there. And I had to give him the mic because I went to his church when that miracle happened. I went to dedicate his building when that miracle happened. I remember seven women that were prayed for in one service and within a year all of them had their miracle. But there was, there was an eighth woman and maybe you are the eighth woman. Tunde Bolanta cannot heal you. He doesn't know how to heal. But I know the healer. And my faith is in the healer. Who gives the breath of life. I like people like John G. Lake. I, I read people like that. You know John G. Lake one time. I've not forgotten this story. But let me, let me, let's travel to John G. Lake. He said a baby broke her neck. I can't remember the brother's name. One black brother in South Africa. He said when he entered. And he saw that brother praying for the baby. From his own scientific experience. He looked at the neck. The neck was broken. He said, but this brother was still praying. He said, so he moved to another hut and said, God, don't let my own belief remove this guy's faith. So he moved to another room. He said, after a few hours, he was praying quietly. He said, the, the brother, he now went and saw that the brother, he, 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 and the brother said, ah, baby healed. The broken neck was healed. Your scientific mind sometimes we deny there is God. But you'll be priding yourself in the number of PhDs you have that has turned to unbelief in your life. Father, he said he prayed, Father, remove anything in my spirit that will make you doubt God. That my pastor said, the eighth woman is a Catholic woman. You didn't know about her. But they have surgically removed her womb and she gave birth. Yeah! I had to give him mic. I said, I didn't see that one. Tell it yourself. So, we have a choice. Your case is not impossible today. If you were here last night, that lady that said her period ceased, 
She was beginning to feel the thing. Is she here today? Are you here today? How are you doing today? Glory to God. A man cannot do that. Let me prophesy to you. What God will do in these last days, he will not just use the preacher. He's going to use the children of God. In your offices, miracles will happen. When you get into a bus, miracles will happen. God is going to turn the world upside down again. There's a healing revival that is going to hit planet Earth. And it's about beginning now. It's a move of the church of Jesus Christ. And God is going to shock the devil with the supernatural. Please be seated. I was doing a, a Zoom meeting for one UK um, network right in my house. While I was minding my own business, I just had an open vision. I saw people whose arms were amputated. I saw hands growing out. Everywhere I go, I'm looking for that. Because if God shows you something, he wants to do it. I don't know about you, but that is the way I think. That's the way my mind works. If he has said it, I'm hunting for it. Huh. Okay. Note this down. The joy of consecration. Say with me, the joy of consecration cancels the voice of condemnation and releases grace for ministry the joy of consecrations cancels the voice of condemnation and releases grace for ministry write down first samuel 22 verses 1 and 2 and psalm 105 verse 17 to 22 first samuel 22 1 and 2 psalm 105 17 to 22 David, therefore, 1 Samuel 22, 1, departed thence and escaped to the cave of Adullam, where his brethren and all his father's house heard it. They went down feeder to him. And everyone that was in distress, and everyone that was in death, and everyone that was discontented, gathered themselves unto him. And he became a captain over them, and there were with him about 400 men. Who wants this kind of church? What kind of church is this? A church that when you collect transport money, you give everybody offering to take bus back home. A church that all you are doing is helping people to pay school fees. That was the kind of church David had. I mean, look at it too. Distress. In debt. Discontented. They gathered them. He said they came like bees and gathered around him. Even in your house, everybody distressed, discontented. Everybody with problems. If they gather, you know that God needs to give you grace. All right, But when you are committed to the will of God, those were the men that became the mighty men of David. There are mighty men and women in this house. I said there are mighty men and women in this house. I've seen people in our church that we used to help them push their car to start. But what they are driving now and where they are living now after many years is a testimony on his own. You are not going to end where you started. Amen. I said you are not going to end where you started. Amen. Is there a better amen in the house of the Lord? Amen. I can imagine David thinking, I'm running for my dear life from King Saul. I don't need this. How many of you have ever felt you have enough problem of your own that other people come and ask you to help them? You are trying to raise your own child's school fees. And another five school fees requests that have come to you. Do you understand what I'm trying to say? I'm trying to take care of this one problem and 10 others have arrived in my front. I want to say the joy of consecration will give you grace to minister in that situation. Many times in our lives we shall minister out of our pain and distress. When I first entered the ministry, man of God, the full-time ministry, I there some ministers here, men of God, women of God. The first place I went to preach, they gave me 100 naira. That was 1987. That's quite a while ago, have you? A little while ago. They gave me 100 naira. As I was leaving the place quietly, I met an old friend from the university who is a doctor. Hmm? The guy asked me, it's not like now that it's, glam, it's, it's glamorous to be in ministry. I'm talking about full-time. I've been preaching longer, but full-time. When I 
this is all I'm doing with my life, full time now. There's nothing else. This is all I'm doing. I saw the guy. The guy. He asked me, so what are you doing now? That I call him pastor. It's, uh, it's like a curse word. Sorry to say. When I say I am in the ministry, he said you are in the mini what? He said hunger we kill you. Those four words, they were terrible words. As I was going to take bus, when I took one, I said, we are hunger. <laughs> we kill you. When I tried to sit down, hunger, we. But you see, when there's a concept, I had to throw that thing away in the night. I, say, Hung, I started talking to hunger. Oh. I said, I will never be hungry. You cannot kill me. God called me to do this assignment, and I'm going to do well. There was nobody there. I started shouting on my own. I started jumping on my own, and that fully spirit disappeared, and I have not been, hunger has refused to kill me. I've employed many people. God has opened the nations to me. I want to say to you, the joy of consecration will silence the voice of condemnation. But if you are not consecrated, you say, hey, there may be a fact to this thing. When was the last offering I got? You start calculating and meditating with the devil. Satan will start giving you counseling session. Hey, this marriage may not really work. Oh. Hmm. See the way he looked at you. Are you sure he still loves you? Maybe something is happening in his head. Oh. The man said, did you really make a mistake? Don't have conference with Satan. <laughs> Casting down imagination. The battlefield is in your mind. And if you don't fight that battle, it makes you I believe I'm talking to somebody there. And when you talk so long, you can start shouting in your room. People say, what's wrong with you? Sometimes you have to lock the door when you want to shout. Sometimes I talk, 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 and I start shouting. I say, glory to God. Somebody asks me, what? why do you always look the same? I think it was Lester Sumra. He said, when I wake up in the morning, 10 to 12 minutes, I just dance before the Lord. I create the atmosphere of heaven in my house. It's not happiness. It's joy we are talking about hallelujah to jesus in 2006 my wife and i were in a conference in england at ashburn it was a leadership retreat for one organization we were speaking there we spoke and it was great and it was time to go so a leading the bishop of the pentecostal holiness in america at the time 2006 doc bicham he said he was going to pray for my wife and i an elderly man is retired now. We're still in touch with him. So he prayed for us. Then he said, prophesying. Ah! In my mind, I said, that prophecy. I was rejecting it in my mind. <laughs> I mean, I like to tell you the truth. If I come here as a superman, you would think God can never use you. Every time I preach, I say, God, even let children understand what I'm saying. And let me be at your level so that you yourself, you can know that God can use you. When we make it too high, you think we are supermen. Me, I'm not a superman. I'm just a man that serves a super God. He said he saw my wife with people with turbans. Plenty all over the place. The place was full of them. And my wife was ministering powerfully to them. In my mind, I said, I'm in Kaduna. And you are seeing Toba. Father, in the name of Jesus, let him see Paris. Let, I go to, let him see the nations. I'm, and I reject him. The man prophesied. I don't even know if I said amen. So when we went out, I told my wife, you are the one they saw. <laughs> they didn't see me in that vision. It is you they saw in the vision. So know what you are going to do. Anyway, we've been supporting missionaries for a long time, you know. But that one he was seeing was a deeper level. One thing led to another. I don't want to give you too many, too many details of that. But one thing led to another. I think it was 2012. Yeah, this is 22, about 10 years ago now. That the Lord spoke to me clearly. To start planting mission churches of our own. I'm not talking about a church in Lagos, Ibadan, Ireland, and those kind of countries. I'm talking about frontline places. The places where if they want, someone says, come and go there. You say, Father, send Jonah there. <laughs> send somebody else. And just December, we were looking at that report. It hasn't always been easy, but it has been full of joy. We are in eight of those nations today. And there are 192 of those frontline churches as I speak to you right now. 
And I'm sure before the end of the year, we'll cross 200 of those kind of frontline churches. Has it been easy? You serve with joy. My wife was talking on our wedding, uh, was it my birthday or wedding anniversary? My birthday, I think she was talking. No, we had 20 years anniversary of our orphanage. My wife said, you know, it was a, a small thing. I didn't want too much noise. We should mark 20, so we called a few friends. My wife said, before this man married me, I did, I've never had her say that one before. The first thing he told me is that we're going to have an orphanage. I looked at her, I said, is that the first thing I told you? I must have been crazy. How will a woman love you? You, you are trying to get a woman to marry you. He said, I'll say, you are going to have how many children? I said, the first thing you told me is that you are going to have an orphanage. I said, God, thank God for godly woman. We've done it with joy. Some of those kids have graduated university today. And many more are going in. What am I trying to drive home to you? There's a certain consecration you make with God with joy and it may be challenging sometimes but you keep shouting in the midst of the pressure if I, I i'm not allowed to but if i share some of the challenges we shouted through you wouldn't believe it what you are going through is nothing for god heaven has taken care of that situation if you will give god the his own food of praise and you begin to shout your praise is going to suffocate the enemy out of the mouth of babes and suckling has he ordained praise that he may steal the avenger let's have a praise break in this church right now begin to shout over that situation begin to shout over that situation begin to shout your victory 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 now pause for a moment just pause for a moment pause for one moment the way I do my own shout, the wall of Jericho did not fall until it was attacked. They went around it. I pick a wall of Jericho. It could be family. I'm specific. So when I'm shouting, I'm not just shouting because my neighbor is shouting. I don't know what you are shouting about, but me, I know what I'm shouting about. So if I'm shouting, I say, God, this over this particular need in my life, and I will shout for some time. Then I will change it again. I will shout another one. Because when you are doing this, something is happening at home. When you begin to shout his praises in church, the angels are walking in another place. So pick what uh, attack is an uh, attack. Pick one. You will shout for some time. Change it again. Pick one. Go. voice of rejoicing shall not cease from your habitation in the name of Jesus. Sit down for a bit. I need to offload everything. When you are rejoicing, something is happening at home. So I've experienced this many times. I don't like sharing too many personal family things. 
But we've been through some situations where this is what broke the neck. You have confessed till you are confused. But the joy of the Lord never stops. I will just take the situation and say, Father, this is it. But I'm rejoicing because you are working on it. And before you know it, phew, you yourself will not even know how it turned. Because you are bringing God on the scene. One or two quick thoughts and then I shall begin to pray for people. I told you we are giving a bit more meat, Abby. All right. Joy of consecration, say with me, comes when you repair the broken down altars in your life. Go to Ezekiel chapter 14, verses 4 and 5. <clears throat> Are you ready? This is God talking now. Therefore speak unto them, and say unto them, Thus said the Lord God, Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of idols, of his idols, that I may take the house of Israel in their own heart because they are all estranged from me through idols. Perhaps the best way I can explain this to you, when an altar is broken because of idols, idol is anything that we venerate more than God. Your work can be an idol, your money can be an idol, your looks can be an idol, your degree can be an idol, your whatever can be an idol. That means that thing is higher than God in your mind. Sometimes we don't accept it. The children of Israel, God told them, I don't want you to have a king. We say, God, I must. I'm talking about consecration now. I'm talking about consecration. Consecration is the kind of prayer Jesus prayed. We don't, uh, Father, if it be thy will. When you, are, when you are saying, God, I want to do your will. If God brings you to this church and someone offends you and you decide to leave, you are not consecrated. Your joy can be affected. Because the day you find a perfect church, the church will get imperfect because you came. And, yeah, I mean... <coughs> the hunt for a perfect church continues until Jesus comes. But there's a joy. God brought me here. With every sense of humility and responsibility, there are many places I could be in this world without stress. But when you are consecrated, when Jesus appeared to me on the 3rd of November, 2019, he said, I've come to open the ship gate. I wish he opened the gate in another place. But it was that same gate he opened. That same our gate he opened. He opened the gate. Jesus opened the gate. That's why I'm saying, Satan, if Jesus opened gate, uh, uh, no shaking now. He opened the gate. Jesus opened the gate. And I, one thing that surprised me is that he opened it at once. That gate, you need one person to hold one side. And that person to, Jesus just opened it at once. He said, I have come to open the ship gate. And we've seen exponential growth in that mission department. What I'm saying is that there's a consecration that says, come hell or high water, sink or swim, live or die. Goodbye, world. I stay no longer with you. Goodbye, pleasures of sin. I stay no longer with you. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. I've made up my mind to go God's way the rest of my life. Now, listen. Don't have a king, we want a king. Don't have a king, we want a king. Don't have a king. You know sometimes, parents, when a child worries you too much, you've had enough, uh, what do they like it in nowadays? Is it ice cream or, or chocolate? You've had enough chocolate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The mother out of frustration say, just take, just take. But when you go to the dentist, the same child will say, he's paining me. <laughs> but you want that chocolate now. Are you following what I'm saying? God said, uh, don't have a king, they wanted a king. 
Paul and Silas were in prison. If it's some of us in that prison, our discussion will be different. Uh, Silas will have said, Brother Paul, hey Silas, how are you doing, buddy? But uh, well, I don't know. I, my back hurts. Oh, sorry, mine is hurting too. Wow. Wow. Are you sure that guy, that vision you had, Brother Paul? Are you sure it wasn't something we ate last night? That Ogbono was really good and that. But maybe we just dreamt it up, man. If we're in the will of God, why is my back bleeding right now? Oh, man. If I get out of this prison, I'm going back to my business. This full-time thing does not work. I don't know if they had that discussion. But they made up their mind. Bleeding backs or no bleeding backs. I'm going to serve God with joy. And that is a sacrifice. Are you getting what I'm trying to say? If you know the will of God and it's tough in the will of God, give him a sacrifice of joy. God will come down into that situation with you. That's why people get depressed and all these things because you are not allowing joy to rise up in your heart. You are majoring on the minor. Jesus looked at the bigger picture when he was going through all that flogging and beating. But I have another guy in the Bible who will not read about him today. But you know his story. His name is Jonah. Jonah served God without joy. Jonah chapter 4, you can read on your own. God said, Jonah, come and go to Nineveh and tell them what I'm saying. He went. But as he was preaching, he said, God, Nineveh repents. In his mind, he said, God killed them. <laughs> Nineveh repents. He said, Father, if, I, if you read Jonah chapter 4, he said, he said, I know you're a compassionate God. And that you will forgive them. But the Assyrians were tough, proud people. They were a threat, constant threat to Israel. So he went there like, okay, God. God. In fact, he lost his joy while preaching. Ministers, be careful. You can lose your joy while preaching. Even as an idol in your life. When, you see, I, got, I gave my life when I was in Form 2 in 1976, okay? Don't, don't do any math. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> As a Baptist boy, got baptized in the Holy Ghost. That time, it's not like now. Baptist is open now. That time, if you speak in tongues, they will kick you out. So I had to leave. Anyway, that's another story for another day. Came among these speaking in tongues people. And I saw things I didn't even understand. You know, sometimes you think you lose your job because as an idol, you are not killing. This is a true story. A man of God approached me. By the way, he was a deliverance minister. I will talk small about that just to help somebody. That one man, we don't do it. So it's not new. Came said to me, I should join him in prayer that if his wife does not divorce him, God will kill his wife. He didn't use the word kill. He said, he used a nice word, God will take her to heaven. If the woman doesn't want to go and your prayer takes her to heaven, didn't you kill her? Stop practicing Pentecostal witchcraft. So in my mind, I said, ah, if somebody needs to go to heaven between two of you, is it not better that the man goes so that somebody can look after the children? <laughs> but when there's an idol in your life, you pray crazy prayers. Sometimes the reason you've lost your joy is there's an idol there. You were happy with your car until you saw your friend's car. Say, God, I pray more than her. I even give more than her. How come? And then, Father, give it to me. You are asking out of lust to consume it upon you. It was not a true desire. And every time the person passes, he says, mm, Not only you day church. Yeah, I know there's nobody like that here. All of you are just wonderful saints of God. Hallelujah. One great man of God said, message should either make you glad, mad, or sad, or the three of the above. Can you say a little amen somewhere? Yeah. 
You need to, you see, if there are things in your life, there are things that actually steal your joy. It's not the devil. It's an idol that you have made yourself. One of it is comparing yourself with other people. The Joneses. And then you become an acting big man or an acting big woman. You are just acting. Don't ask somebody that. Ask yourself, am I an acting big woman? Am I an acting big man? Everything you own is borrowed. Everything. From shoe to top. And you lose your joy over just somebody getting blessed. If I know the direction I'm going, what does it matter what's happening to someone else? In fact, I should rejoice with you because when blessings is coming near your neighbor, it means it's near, nearer you than before somebody. Instead of allowing your idol, oh, this person is getting married, my own is coming. You should dance with them as though you are the one getting married. But if there's an idol of competition in your ministry, as an idol of, I've been, by the grace of God, the places this my leg has touched, you won't believe. But you never, it's not a problem. There's one more thought, but let me express this one and be done with it. I prophesied on one woman years ago that God will take her to their, 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 their parliament in, in their country in Europe. For what was a crazy meeting. I was to preach Sunday morning, and these guys were live on TV. I mean, not the time of streaming, no. I mean, they have a TV station that as you are talking, the whole city and the other countries are watching you. And I got up to preach like that, and the Lord said, call her and her husband up, and I called them up, and I said, so what? He said, tell her to run, she's going to win. I said, run for what? There are all these prophets all over the place, and they fear them. A prophet who collects data is a false prophet. If you collect people's data and information, without prophesying, you are crazy. Totally crazy. The prophetic ministry should make you walk with fear and trembling. Because you can destroy somebody's life. Anyway, that is just Jara, we say in the north. It's bonus. I give that word. Long story short, they took me to lunch. The woman, the man was pulling my shirt. We are behind in the poles. I don't even know what we ate that day. I said, God, you have ruined my ministry. Publicly, everybody has heard now. Of course, she went to parliament. She brought me in there one day to address their party. One big limo came and carried me. When the thing came, I thought, who are they looking for? I realized it was me. Me too, I entered like one better person. <laughs> they carried me to the place. They opened door for me. Me too, I walk out like one man, like that. But you can't create things like that except God creates them. I know I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you know, that for some people that is the, I'm not even believing for something like that. My quest is the presence of God. In my life, if I don't care who it is, the presence of God is my highest quest in life. The, if you take that, take every other thing I don't want. So, any idol you know that is killing your joy, crucify the idol. Some parents create idol. They say, ah, my favorite child, because that one is always coming first. And then the one not coming first now has to be competing with that one. I say, okay, okay, okay. And there will be a kind of jealousy against your sister or against your brother. And some of the things that is stealing your joy now is any small memory of that one. Something will rise up in you. Then they take you to the next generation too. My children must do better than that one. If their child goes to London, my own must go to America. If that one goes to Canada, my own must go to where? Jamaica. <laughs> hey! You know, I'm preaching by the spirit of prophecy. And what happens is that God begins to showcase things to you and you talk about them. Those things are not in my note. I'm just talking. Are you see here? Can you take one more? Just one more. Anybody who is uh, taller than you is too tall. <laughs> because there's nothing you can do about the height. 
There's no point doing like this. Just maintain yourself. Anybody shorter than you, Kuma? It's too short. Because there's nothing I can do about that height. I don't know about Fatal, but taller and shorter. That one, I'm sure. <laughs> Try to enjoy yourself. Do you understand what I'm saying? Try to enjoy your life. Enjoy where you are on the way to where you are going. You may not be where you want to be, but be happy, be joyful where you are now on the way to where God is taking you. Today in one location, we pay over 200 salaries. In one location. But there was a time that to eat was a problem. One day, I just want to help somebody. I will get to this last point soon. One day at home, many years ago, we didn't have any children. My wife and I got up in the morning. We looked at the store. There was nothing there. Breakfast, there's nothing. Though. If you know my wife, she's a very quiet woman. A very strong woman of faith. So we sat there, sat there on the dining table. We were just gisting. I'm not saying, God, why have you done this? <laughs> the joy of consecration. If you are a minister and there's a problem in the house, you didn't eat, don't go and tell the church that you people are not taking care of me. What's wrong with you? Did they call you? <laughs> Maybe you should go to your elders and talk. You people are not taking care of me. With what all that I'm doing for you. I don't want to be with a guy like that. I can tell you many stories. I don't even know why I'm saying these things. So let me try and finish. <laughs> because it's a bad advertisement for God. If you have quarrel, go and quarrel with the person that sent you. And God will have a neat way to take care of that thing. Anyway, we are just gist it. Then one sister came. She said, as I was buying, I think it was potatoes, she said. Something said I should buy you one basket. That something is the Holy Ghost. Because pastor was fasting for no reason. <laughs> we said, put it in the kitchen. When she left, I told my wife, give me a high five. <laughs> if you sow in tears, you will come back with joy. You see, one of the things that confuses the younger ministers is People testify, but they don't tell you the other side. They tell you the victory, but they don't tell you about the test. So you want to have the victory without the test, and then you lose the joy of even serving God. We were still sitting on that same spot. This is a long time ago, probably 1989 or something like that. So it's a very old story. But I tell it all the time because that's how we started. And it's good to tell it. We were still sitting on that table. I still remember the table, round table like this. You know, when you are just two of you, you don't need a big table. <laughs> just round table. Another sister. I don't know why it's only sisters that hear from God. <laughs> What's wrong with these men? Can't they hear God? All those men in our church, nobody came to our help. God will bless you, daughters of Zion. <laughs> Brothers, don't be jealous. God will bless you too. Oh. <laughs> Please hear God, oh, brothers. <laughs> Who they hear? Okay, that, hear for that generator that pastor talk about. Oh. <laughs> we will see now by Sunday. If we don't hear for that generator that pastor talk about. This other one said, I was buying eggs. And something, that something is someone. Say, buy pastor egg. To you, it's a very simple test, but to me, to me, oh, that's to you, it's an uh, egg, uh, yaman, uh, potato and egg. What is that? At that time, <laughs> there was, in the store was zero, nothing. Man of God, zero. And we're preaching faith. <laughs> When she went and left, drove off, I said, my wife, give me another high five again. 
I said, now you have to enter and perform your ministry. <laughs> Hallelujah. But the thing is, it didn't change our joy. Because we know that need is already met according to his riches and glory. So you see, if you don't mix faith with uh, joy with your faith, you'll be frowning and say, I'm serving the Lord. <laughs> say, serve the Lord with gladness. And because you are not serving him with joy for the abundance of things will not be our portion, he said they will serve their enemies. Anything you are doing in this church, maybe they recognize you or not, do it with joy. Because God that sees in secret, he will reward you in the open. One more thought I think I have, and then I'm going to start praying now. My time is about the time I set for myself. Anyway, Lillian Yeomans, I don't know if you know, uh, you've read about this woman, one of those old timers, timers. She gave a story. Look at Hebrews 1, 8 and 9 as I close. But unto the Son, he said, Thy throne, O God, is forever. Even a scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy throne. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. The yoke-breaking anointing, say with me, the yoke-breaking anointing is the oil of gladness. It is waiting to hear your voice to manifest in your life. The yoke-breaking anointing is the oil of gladness. It is waiting to hear your voice to manifest in your life. Lillian Newman is one of those old-timers. She was a doctor and all that. She shared a testimony in one of her books that I consider a classic. She said there was a missionary, I think, in China. I think she had smallpox. And God showed her, you know, that time they'll quarantine you once you have smallpox because it was contagious, it was a new disease. They didn't have these miracle drugs then, so they quarantined her. And, uh, you know, when they quarantined her, she was there, and the Lord spoke to her, showed her a vision. She saw her problem, in this case her sickness, her smallpox in one box, basket, full. And then the next basket was empty. And the Lord told her, if she will begin to praise God, she will get healed. If you've been quarantined, it's not the one you go on your own. If you've been quarantined by force, you know that it's not a good experience. She was... So the woman began to praise God. Medical science couldn't help her. She began to praise God. She began to praise God. She began to worship God. Just thanking God. Lord, I thank you. The, people, the nurses thought, maybe this thing is getting to her brain. She kept singing. She kept worshiping. And then God showed her that the basket of her praise was beginning to fill up. You know smallpox? The whole thing is all over your body. And as she increased the basket of her praise, somebody, you are having a pain around here. Just here. Around here. Now, now. Do bye-bye to the thing. As she increased the basket of her praise, nobody prayed for her the smallpox just disappeared. Now it's documented, you can read it for yourself. The wall of Jericho was waiting to come down. Hmm? Waiting for their shout. The three armies against Jehoshaphat, what happened? When they began to praise, 2 Chronicles 20, the Lord said what? Ambushment against them. Whatever it is today needs to hear your voice. Let me give you one story. There's a boy I thought I, a young man I thought I saw here yesterday, Kayo De Ogundolapo. Maybe he wasn't the one, maybe in our spirit. Where did he? I thought I saw him on that side yesterday. I'll tell you that boy's story. Um, that boy, young man now is married, but he used to work in my office, now in Lagos. He used to, go, when he goes to bed, he will wake up in the morning. You actually see real razor blade, sometimes bleeding all over him. Uh, we thought on the authority of the believer in church then. He told his mother and his sister to go into the inner room. He will stay in the parlor. Hmm? 
If Jesus is the head and I'm the body, if you touch me, you are touching Jesus. Isn't it also? Many of these things won't work for you because you had it one time. You're going to read it and read it and read it. The word of God will work for you if you see it as one that has gotten a great spoil. When the word really starts working in you is when joy is mixed with it. When there's revealed knowledge, there will be shouting. There are some things you've not seen before. You say, wow! He got it that day. And he went home and began to rebuke. When those people came, in the name of Jesus, they stopped. They st he said, this thing is working. Start running around the room. He said, run in the spirit, though. He didn't see them physically. Park, 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 park. Run faster. Park, 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 park. Run faster. Park, park, park. Your mountain is waiting to hear your voice. Your mountain is waiting to hear your joy. That was the end of that story. Now, in the deliverance days, what I found out is that the same people we deliver on Monday, by Friday, they are back. If they last two weeks, if they last two weeks. But that, we didn't pray for that guy. He delivered himself. Now, if you're in a situation where you can't help yourself, of course we'll pray for you. That's why we're here. I told you the story, maybe last time I was here, of a guy that the doctor said, we don't know what's wrong with you in the abdomen. I was not, I didn't pray for him, but two of my pastors also prayed for him. And after about two hours of just praying, they didn't know what was wrong too. The guy vomited an object that had 26 office pin heads. I have the picture here. It had a black thread with a paper. They, and by the time we got, they got someone to read that paper, it had three names of evil spirits. He never swallowed it, but it entered him. They are through demonic things. Like the guy yesterday that I said, they, is it they fired him arrow? Are they, what, is it fire arrow? They, char, they jazzed him. I think he used the word jazzed him. And for, since how many years we having that problem? Anointing just came. Phew. The same anointing is on the word of God. So today, your mountain needs to hear your voice, needs to hear your joy. Let's rise this morning. Glory to God. Glory to God. Now begin to speak to that mountain.